Hello there, Atheist Jr. here, your friend and humble narrator. And I'm back with another installment of my Whack and Atheist series. So today is Kent Hovind versus basically the geologic column. Now, Kent says that the geologic column was founded by evolutionists, was created by evolutionists in an order to like discredit Christians, which is not true. And we're going to get into that. Sorry, I just had to fix my webcam. It's actually creationists who were the early geologists who developed the geologic column. So he's totally wrong when he says this. But let's get into it. Also, I wanted to uh, say thank you to the people who watched my last stream. Uh, Daniel Dennett uh, versus Kent Hovind got 10,000 views. So thank you so much to the, all the people that watched that. I was really surprised um, at how fast that one sort of racked up some views. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. It's so awesome to see the uh, the response to the content that I've been making. Dick stuck their head up a long time ago. Somebody needs to whack them back down, and tonight we're going to whack them, okay? Even small children can spot how stupid evolution is and whack them back down sweetly with Christian love, okay? So many atheists, so little time. And we do this whacking to try to wake you up. You've been taught something that is dumb, and we're here to set the record straight. Even though there are lots of evolutionists, we can only do one or two at a time. Tonight, the winner is the folks who believe in the geologic column. There's no, I'll show you the guy who invented it. Let's see. The geologic column was invented to free the science from Moses. Ah, this is stuff I got off of. What website was this? Just cut and paste today. I just typed in. Where's the geologic column? Misconceptions about the geologic column. ICR has a great article about it. How good are the young earth arguments from oh, somebody, oh, Hoven? Somebody picked on me. Is it possible Dr. Hoven, who taught earth science 13 out of his 15 years as a high school science teacher, doesn't understand the concept behind the geologic column? Oh, I understand it better than you do. Yes, that is absolutely true. That is the case. It is possible and it is accurate to say that. Okay. How does the geologic column exist? Because according to Kent Hovind, said it does not exist. Ah, Carl answered, Kent Hovind has never said the geologic column doesn't exist. He simply interprets the column in a different way than the standard interpretation. Well, now, Carl, the geologic column does not exist. The layers of the earth exist. Now, that's not the question. Does the earth... So what are those layers then? Because <clears throat> those layers are what geologists refer to as a geologic column. So the layers are there, then it, it should follow that it does exist, especially considering that we find it in the order that they claim all over the world. Not everywhere in the world, but there are many locations where we find it in the exact order that is in the textbooks. They have layers? Yeah. Are they different ages? No. No, I'll show you tonight, okay? So you think they're not different ages at all? Because you say that they were laid down, all those layers were laid down in one year. Well, were they laid down all at the same exact time? Because even if they were laid down, uh, one layer was laid down and then another layer was laid down a few months later, those are still different ages. He believes it was all laid down in a sudden catastrophic flood. I agree. Rather than over billions of years, I agree. I personally don't agree with Hovind's interpretation. Carl, keep studying. You will, okay? But you don't need to put words into his mouth to make a point. If you're going to argue with someone, argue what they actually believe rather than creating a straw man. Yay. Good job, Carl. Okay. I'm going to show you. Let me get over here to the other uh, right here about you. This guy is saying, oh, don't put words in Kent Hovind's mouth, but he's, he's literally saying that Kent has never said the geologic column doesn't exist. He says it every five minutes. Like, what is this guy talking about? Your crazy geologic column. Now I want to go to slide number 605. 605, enter. 605. How come I didn't put that one up? Oh, it didn't work. Did I do something wrong here? Uh, let's see. Hey, thank you to Azo64 for joining. Uh, the channel membership for five months. Thank you so much. It's a, he, he wrote a message. It says, Kent's an idiot. Keep up the great job, AJ. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate the generosity. 
Uh, six, oh, there I got it. Okay, 605, enter. Okay. Uniformitarianism <clears throat> is the idea that started a couple hundred years ago that the way things are happening now is the way they've always been happening. The yeah. So basically that the laws of physics are operating now the same way that they did in the past, which is true, except that people who believe in the Bible think that God can break the laws of physics and perform miracles. Present is the key to the past. This is not true. The catastrophes can change what we happen very rapidly. You can see a catastrophe go through and say, wow, this didn't happen slowly. That dam broke in uh, Indiana at Purdue University. It was a catastrophe. That little gash did not, little creek in there at the bottom did not carve that big gash down there. It happened as a catastrophe. If you went and looked at that little bitty gash and all you, that's all you knew was that little creek at the bottom, you'd say, wow, it took millions of years. You look at Grand Canyon and say, wow, that 75 or 50 foot river made that 18 mile wide canyon. No, it did not. That little creek did not carve that gash. That canyon's 18 miles wide, and if you think that river made it, you're nuts, okay? It wasn't just the Colorado River. It was the Kaibab uplift and the erosion from the river running through Grand Canyon. They carved it. Crazy. The Bible says in the last days there would be scoffers who would walk after their own lust, and they would say all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. They're ignorant of how God made the heavens. We talk about that on video number two of my series. They're also ignorant that the world was overflowed with water. The earth was destroyed by a flood. And at thy rebuke, they fled, it said in Psalm 104, God covered the earth with a deep like a garment. The water stood above the mountains. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys. Some other translations say the mountains rose and the valleys sank down. At the end of the flood, the crust of the earth was all busted up and sections would float up and down and water would rush off. So mountains arose, the valleys sank down. I think the Rocky Mountains lifted up and the Appalachian Mountains lifted. You know, it is kind of interesting. The mountain ranges are parallel to the coastline. Hmm. Hmm. Major fold mountains of the world. Huh. I think maybe that all happened at the end of the flood when the mountains arose and the valleys sank down and made the oceans that we currently have today. <clears throat> That's another long story. Uplifted mountains. It would bend all the rock layers, which at the time were all soft mud layers. Mm, that's not true. They were not all soft mud. And there's no way that the Rocky Mountains formed in 6,000 years. It's just not enough time for that to happen. We need less time. Creationists need less time. And there would be unconformities, all this stuff would happen very rapidly. You know, when you get up and look at these layers under the magnifying glass, they don't have fracture marks in them. They were all soft mud when they were bent, all bent together. All the layers were still soft. Wow. And then they hardened. Yeah, those layers are not different ages. Quit talking about that stupid geologic column. It does not exist. Okay. So the mountains arose. If they lift up slowly, the water will run off slowly, leaving nice rounded mountains. If they lift up rapidly, it leaves jagged mountains behind. The flood explains it, and the scoffers are ignorant of that flood. Second Peter chapter three. Okay, let's see. I'm not. I mean, how can you say that people are ignorant of the flood? I'm aware of what you believe. I know you think that the that a worldwide flood happened. So how can I be ignorant of it? I mean, I know that it didn't happen. I'm, I'm not ignorant of the fact that there is a myth of a global flood. There's lots of them from lots of different cultures. But this is what I don't understand about him saying that, that people are ignorant of the flood. Like, I'm aware that what you think happened. That doesn't mean it did happen. <clears throat> happened. Over millions of years, the Colorado River carved the Grand Canyon. If you think that river made that canyon, you are insane. Ken has two channels. One of them is just Doc Dino, and the other is Genesis Baptist Church, which I don't know why he's even doing that, because he's already splitting up his small viewership. Um, he should just have one channel and just stick to that. I guess he doesn't want to have one that can just be deleted, but, you know, I just think it's dumb. This all started back in 1700 with a guy named James Hutton. We're going to whack him tonight. Where's my official hammer? James, we're going to take some real science and whack you. James Hutton was a lawyer, studied to be a lawyer, uh, got washed out of that trade. He said in his book he wrote, Theory of the Earth, 
that the Earth is much older than people think. Now, this is back in the 1700s. For most of human history, Christians at least, the Western world, believed that God had created the Earth about 4000 BC, because that's what you get if you add up the dates in the Bible. It says Adam was 130 when Seth was born. I mean, you can add up the numbers yourself in Genesis chapter 5 and Genesis 11. You're going to get the same thing. The earth was created about 4,000 B.C., 6,000 years ago. Oh, people have believed this one thing for a long time. That means we should still believe it. That's a terrible argument. You know, like people believed that the body uh, medicine you required a balance of the four humors of yellow bile and black bile. That doesn't mean it was true, but people believed it for a long time. People believed that um, things ignited because of a chemical called phlogiston that was in them. People believed in something called the uh, luminiferous ether. None of those things actually are real, but people believed them for a long time. People believed in alchemy. Isaac Newton thought alchemy was real. Like, this is such a terrible argument to say that, oh, well, for most of human history, we thought this one thing, but then, you know, just recently, this guy came along and challenged it. Well, maybe there's a good reason for that. From Wikipedia, <clears throat> Theory of the Earth was a publication by James Hutton, which laid the foundations for geology. <sighs> laid the foundations for insanity is what it did. I'll show you. In it, he showed the Earth is a product of natural forces. No, he didn't show any such thing. What could be seen happening today over long periods of time could produce what we see in the rocks. Oh, the present is the key to the past. The way things are happening now is they've always been happening. Peter prophesied that would happen. Let's see. <clears throat> it, is, it also hypothesized that the age of the earth was much older than the biblical literalist, literalist claim. This idea, uniformitarianism, was used by Charles Lyell in his work. So we just had a new person sign up for my Patreon for $3. So thank you to Brandon Connell. I really appreciate the generosity. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Um, if you haven't um, checked out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash atheist junior. And Lyle's textbook was an important influence on Charles Darwin. The work was first published in 18, 1788 by the Royal Society of Edinburgh and later in 1795 in two books. There's the book originally published, and then now he did his book, Theory of the Earth. In 1795, he said, the Earth is much older than they think. Now keep in mind, during this time in the world, there were a lot of revolutions going on. The American Revolution, the French Revolution, the Germans, the Spanish. A lot of countries were sick and tired of having a monarch rule over them, and they wanted a democracy. This is called the age of anti-monarchy. So people were looking for a way to get rid of a king, king government. Now, without getting into the politics of it, the Bible says to honor the king. And so they, want, they thought the Bible was an obstacle to their political objective. Yeah, because Kent Hovind has always argued to honor your government. To get rid of the king. We had all these revolutions going on. So they readily accepted this idea that the Bible has a mistake. Wow, we can get rid of the king. Before radiometric dating was available, many people estimated the age of the earth to be a few thousand years old. Mm -hmm. In 1700s, James Hutton came along with his crazy idea of uniformitarianism. The principle states that earth processes occurring today are similar to those that occurred in the past. He observed that the processes that changed the rocks and land around him were very slow. He inferred they had been just as slow throughout Earth's history. Hutton hypothesized it took much longer than a few thousand years. See, he was ignorant of the flood, like Second Peter said. This is lie number six on my video number four, lies in the textbooks in my creation seminar series. Is that the sixth lie you told in that video? Uniformitarianism, the present's the key to the past. No, James, the Bible's the perfect key to the past. The flood's the only way to explain the topography we see today. They talk about... The Bible is not a perfect key to the past because it was written long before we had all the advancements in scientific knowledge that we have now. Uplifting of mountains and uh, you know erosion, deposition, all that kind of stuff, all that happens, I agree. But has it been going for millions of years? This is what the students are taught. Good. And then the principle of uniformitarianism. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Observed that rock is broken down into smaller particles. That's true. He watched as these rock particles were carried downstream. That's true. He saw the rock particles are deposited and they form new layers. 
Ah, he started teaching that the layers of the earth are different ages. Uniformitarianism. The present is the key to the past. They said, oh, the continents might be moving apart. People ask me, do you think the continents were ever connected? I say, they're still connected right now. Aren't they? Just the low places are full of water. So they're not connected then because that's oceanic crust. It's not the same thing as the continents being connected. I mean, if you can't walk across one continent to another, what good is it to say that it's connected? It's ridiculous. Oh, there's just a massive body of water in between it, but the low parts are full of water. They're still connected. It's ridiculous. It's a semantic argument. It's just stupid. Uniformitarianism. The theory that Earth's features are mostly accounted for by gradual, small-scale process over long periods of time. Which is perfectly logical and reasonable to think that that's true. It just makes sense. They apply this to the Pangaea idea, apes becoming humans, mountain building, sediment accumulation, and Grand Canyon. James Hutton. I just want to point out that Pangaea was spelled wrong. <laughs> had a strong influence on a guy named Charles Lyell, who was a lawyer. Charles Lyell, loyal, loyal from Scotland. Ly liar, lawyer, Charles Lyer, liar, liar. Best known, best known as the author. Best known, best known liar of principles of geology, which represented to a wide public audience the idea that the Earth was shaped by the same natural processes still in operation today. Ah, oh. uniformitarianism. Okay. Oh. Lyle wrote his book Principles of Geology, published it in 1830. Principles of Hovendology. About how, how all the things all the things on the Earth can be explained by slow, gradual processes. Charles Lyle was a lawyer from Scotland. He wrote this book, published it in 1830. These two lawyers, James Hutton and Charles Lyle, with a strong dislike for the Bible, fulfilled the second the three, Peter 3 prophecy about scoffers being willingly ignorant of the flood. Lyle said in his book, which is on the shelf over here somewhere, men of superior talent, he was talking about himself, he thought he was smart, he was a lawyer, you know, like himself, who thought for themselves and were not blinded by authority. That's a backhanded slap at the Bible. Okay. As if you don't think that you're smart, Kent. And that's not how you quote a book if you're going to add your own like notes in there saying, oh, he's clearly talking about himself. Well, like you can't include that in the quote. It makes it seem like that's what it said in the original print. He said, you've reached a false conclusion because you, you follow ancient doctrines. Guess which one he's talking about there? The Bible, okay? Oh, the Bible. Whoa. All of this is true. And you're supposed to rest on scriptural authority. That's true. He, he, you haven't pointed out why anything is that you've said here is wrong. All of what they're saying here is true. He mocked the Bible every chance he could get in his book. He remarked how much the interests of religion, as well as those of sound philosophy, had suffered by perpetual mixing with sacred writings, with questions in physical science. He reasoned philosophy against those who regarded the disordered state of Earth's crust as exhibiting signs of the wrath of God. See, people would look at the crust of the Earth and say, wow, there was a flood. He, he wanted to argue against that. He wanted to argue against religious prejudices. Uh -huh. In other words, you believe the Bible. He said clearly his goal was to free the science from Moses. Good. That, sound, that all sounds great. Do it. Well, guess who wrote about the flood? Oh, the flood. Moses. Yeah. Moses. So Lyle, in his book, he is one of the primary guys responsible for inventing what we have today taught in school as the geologic column. He said each of the layers is different ages. The Cenozoic, Mesozoic, all this kind of stuff. In the early 1800s, each layer of rock was given a name like Jurassic, and an age, and an index fossil. And they made up this whole geologic column, which does not exist anywhere. It said the top layer is 10,000 years old. The bottom ones, well, Jurassic is, you know, 150 million years old, and the Archean era, or Protozoic, uh, is 2.5 billion, really. If the layers are different ages, I have a question. How can the layers be different ages? Where's all this new material coming from? So. To claim that the geologic column doesn't exist because they've found examples where it is shown in the proper order in Iran, the Himalayas, Indonesia, Australia, North Africa, Canada, South America, Japan, Mexico, and the Philippines. 
So there's lots of examples where it's found in the exact right order that they're claiming it is. Now, Kent is going to say that, oh, that's just based on random shuffling. So it's just a coincidence that they've found the layers in the exact right order in all these places. Is it coming from outer space? Where was the Holocene material floating around for 2.4999 billion years? Huh? They don't, don't think about it. If you shuffle a deck of cards, is the top card younger? No. If you shake a jar of water until the mud settles on the bottom and the uh, settle, silt on top, is, are the layers different ages? I've ex this has been explained to Kent so many times. And the example I did the last time I talked to him was I asked Kent, so um, Mount Rushmore, the sculpture, was completed in 1927. So how old would you think Mount Rushmore is? And he wouldn't answer the question. But the right answer is that the sculpture is less than 100 years old, but the rock that made it up is millions of years old, millions or billions, whatever. But it's much older than the sculpture. So ergo, it's just like how a layer can be a certain age but the rock that makes it up is much older because you start the count, you start the clock when the layer is done forming, you start the clock at zero. It doesn't matter the age of the material making it up. No, all the layers are the same age. They're all in the jar at the same time. We flip this thing over all the time here for people to see, and I'll do it one more time. Maybe Mr. Nelson will get it this time. Look at this. It forms multiple layers the layers are not different ages. They're all in the jar at the same time. Billy, go out and slap that peacock, would you? Okay. Oh, the macaw. Yeah, okay. How can the top layer... Maybe you should feed it. ...or be younger? Is it coming from outer space? I mean, if you know how limestone is formed, this should answer your question. I mean, the material comes from living organisms in that case. So that's one example where you can get new material from living organisms which reproduce. So right there. How can they not see the silliness of this geologic column? Creation.com did a great article on that. The geologic column, does it exist? No, it doesn't exist anywhere. You can read that article for yourself on creation.com. See, there's, it's a fact, the Earth has layers. One theory is the layers form slowly over millions of years. The other theory is, the layers are all from the flood of Noah. And the atheists are always trying to erase that line between their theory and the fact and their interpretation of the fact. It's a fact the Earth has layers. It is not a fact they're different ages. The geologic column is the Bible for the evolutionist. It can only be found one place in the world, the textbooks. This textbook author admitted it and probably got fired for it. If there were a column of sediments, unfortunately, no such column exists. If there were a column of sediments deposited continuously since the formation of the Earth, the entire history of the planet could be reconstructed. Why do you not read that middle sentence? It's because you're lying by omission. That's super dishonest, Kent. You can't just read the sentences you want and act like that's what it actually said. That's even worse than quote mining, or that basically is quote mining. It's ridiculous. One atheist wrote an article and said, Hovind is wrong. It does exist. The by the way, um, there's going to be a debate tonight. Grayson is debating Ken Hoven again, so I'm going to be checking that out. And if you don't want to watch Standing for Truth channel, we're going to, me and Grayson are going to do a, re a review of that debate, either with, you know, probably not tomorrow, but within the next few days. So look out for that. It's going to be a really good debate. I was helping Coach Grayson on uh, and giving him some tips last night. The logic column does exist. Really? All uh, right yes. here. Really? The global stack of fo index fossils exists nowhere on Earth. Most index fossils do not usually overlie each other in the same locality. The geologic column does not exist, so it does not need to be explained by flood geology. Ah. The ge the it <clears throat> evolutionists who understand geology would say, look, we made up, we stuck all this together from a mixture from all over the world, okay? Yeah, it's on Standing for Truth channel. Here we have... Change through time, biology. If the geologic column existed, it'd be 100 miles thick. So lie number seven on my video lies in the textbook is, is right there. Here we have the supposed geologic column. You ready? We have Holdenville Shale. Ah. Then we have Perry Farm Shale. Oh, here's Nowata Shale, Bandera Shale, 
Mine Creek Shale, Anna Shale, Labatt Shale, Hovern Shale, Little Osage Shale, Little Hovern Shale. Uh, uh, ha, ha, they're all shale. They're all hoven. How do you know the ages? Oh, by the index. How do you know the ages of the hoven? Fossils, right, okay. Here's limestone. The index hovens. Let's see. The Idenbro limestone. Here's the Lenapaw limestone. Here's the uh, Woodland limestone, Worland limestone, Altamont limestone, 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 Fort Scott limestone. Question. How do you tell the difference in age between the Altamont limestone and the Fort Scott limestone? Radiometric dating, which gives you exact ages, absolute ages. You get absolute ages from radiometric dating, Ken. They're both limestone. Yeah, they're both hoven. They tell it by the index fossils, which goes... I mean, that's one way, but it's not the only way. And you can cross-confirm using index fossils and radiometric dating and other methods. Oh, that's one hell of a screenshot. Back to believing in evolution theory. It's circular reasoning, pure and simple. Oh. Article of detailed examination of the young earth creationist claim that the geologic column does not exist. It shows the entire column does exist in North Dakota. You know, if you shuffle cards enough, if you had 10,000 decks of cards and shuffled them all, there might be a few places where you get, you know, six or eight hearts in a row. I don't think that would happen. But there are like 18 or more places on the earth where we see the geologic column in the exact order. And that's simply not from random shuffling. Yeah, it might. Okay. And there might be, if you shuffle around the layers enough, a few places where they come in the order that you would like them to be. It's not the order that we would like them to be in. That's the order that they've been found in. Look at this. Here's the limestone in hyper. It's the order you don't want them to be saline in. Saline waters. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I we think the flood would cover all of that. Let me cut. Of course you do. Up here. Index fossils might have been found in order in some places. That's the result oh, of random shuffling. There's great articles have. about all of this on creation.com, answersingenesis.org, icr.org. I'm not going to bother making the arguments. I'm just going to point you to this website. They all have, there's a lot of creationist websites that cover this. Yeah, there's a lot of liars like you. They say these different types of seashells are the index fossils. How do you know that's Mesozoic? Oh, it contains this particular kind of shell. I see. Now, they say the layers are different ages. I ask them, guys, if that layer sat there for 10 million years, why are there no erosion marks between the layers? How would you see them? Wouldn't it rain once in a while in 10 million years waiting for the next layer? And why is there no soil built up between these layers? Because it's it would have turned to rock. Oh, rock, 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 rock. Huh, interesting. If you shake up a jar of dirt, sand, gravel, clay, and water, it'll separate into layers. I've done this experiment and it doesn't. You can flip these things over and make 10 or 15 or 20 layers in a few minutes. That's on a tiny scale compared to the entire earth. What a ridiculous comparison doesn't take millions of years. Get a sand art toy. The moon is pulling our water up on the earth. If the moon and sun are pulling at the same time in the same direction, it's called a spring tide. Oh. If the moon and sun are pulling at a right angle to each other, it cancels out some of the tide. The oh. moon has a greater influence on the tide than the sun, oh. but the sun can cancel out some of the effect of the tide, and it's called a neap tide. Oh. Who cares? Okay. Tide no. changes all the time. Oh. So the, earth is, the moon is pulling the water up on the earth, making a bump. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, the Earth is spinning. Whoa. The bump stays right under the moon. Oh. So if the Earth is spinning, that means from one side, the water is being dragged backwards into that bump at the same speed the Earth is turning. Oh. At the North Pole, it's going zero. At the equator, 1037.5658, oh. depending on your altitude, if you're at sea level or up on a mountain. Okay. Oh. Here in Lenox, Alabama, 31 degrees north, we're spinning 886 miles an hour right here, right now. Uh -huh. oh. Oh. So the water is rushing into the tidal bulge, at the same <laughs> bulge <laughs> speed, the earth is turning the other way. Moon's pulling it up, water's rushing in from all sides, and from one side, it's going at the same speed the earth is turning. And it's the sideways movement of the water that forms these layers. These layers are not formed uh, vertically, they're formed horizontally. That's ridiculous. I'll show you. There's a great video that you all ought to watch. It was done years ago. It's a little bit poor quality by today's standards. Of course, all of my videos are poor quality, so. A lot of ours are too, right? But here it is right <laughs> here. Experiment. Wow, I called that one. In stratification.
Let me call this up and see if I can make it play. I'm starting at the 19 minute mark of some French guy doing this uh, talking here. Ready? No audio. Help me out. There, what, I don't understand. There's no audio. I didn't touch a thing. You turned it down here? The deposit of microstrata or laminae prograding downstream. The flow of the current was then reduced to a half a meter per second. This provoked a deposit of large particles of sediment. Then, as the deposit thickened, the speed of current was increased back to one meter per second and laminate deposited on the large particles. By the way, during the flood, the speed of the water is going to change constantly as the earth turns. Because sometimes it's pulling it into the bump, sometimes away from the bump, the tidal bump. So this is what caused the layers to form the change in velocity of the sideways current. No. So the deposit was composed from top to bottom of beds or strata of small particles, large particles, and small particles. The three superposed beds prograded together from upstream to downstream. This demonstrated that the beds or strata did not form one at a time as required by the principle of superposition they formed simultaneously. Nor did any one bed have the same age at any point as required by the principle of continuity because they formed together and sideways. Each lateral part of a single bed or strata therefore had a different age. But something else was happening. When the okay, you can see here the, the very bottom layer would still be younger than the very top gray layer. Velocity of flow was reduced. A second deposit started forming on top of the first, whilst the first was continuing. The two superposed deposits prograded simultaneously from upstream to downstream. When the velocity of flow was increased, a third deposit started forming on top of the other two and all three prograded together downstream. Here we have a phenomenon of multiple beds of sediment forming on top of each other, vertically and sideways at the same time. The triggering mechanism... Vertically and sideways at the same time, so not just horizontally. ...mechanism having been simple changes of current. The laboratory experiment showed that where there is a water current, one layer does not deposit upon the other with each layer being older than the one which covers it. Oh, you can watch the whole thing for yourself, the experiments in stratification video. Let me stop him here. But he shows, if you stop and use some logic here, uh, is that it? Yep, okay, let's see if it goes, okay. All these layers were deposited sideways, not this way. You can get 10 or 15 layers forming with the current downstream. Ah, they teach the kids in school the layers are different ages. No, guys, they're all the same age, all formed at the same time. Now, uh, let's see. Upstream, downstream. The Bible says they delight in lies. There would be scoffers in the last days who would walk after their own lusts. If what you're saying is true, that all of the layers formed at the same time and formed horizontally, that would mean that the geologic column that we have now from top to bottom was just like existing and just formed horizontally across the entire earth. Is that what you're saying happened? Because that's ridiculous. Why would all those layers be formed? Because first they would have to what stack up on top of each other a little bit, right? Even if they're forming horizontally, there still has to be some sort of starting point where they're stacked on top of each other. Because if you're going to say that, like the video showed, like one or two layers at the bottom forming horizontally, and then more came on top. So those top layers would still be younger. And they would be willingly ignorant of how God made the heavens and how the earth was overflowed with water. Colorado River did not make that little, that little river at the bottom did not make Grand Canyon. That's lie number one in my video series, Lies in the Textbooks. Let me go to slide number 854, enter. 
In uh, the world-famous court trial, the Scopes Monkey Trial, 1925, the atheist lawyer said, the Earth's strata as time markers, let's see, the crust of the Earth is arranged in a series of horizontal strata of varying thicknesses. The lowest layers are obviously the oldest. Stop right there. No, they're not. This is pure baloney. But they got by with this, and it's in the movie Inherit the Wind, you know, that makes fun of the Christians. Inherit the Wind movie on the Scopes Monkey Trial. As the water is moving sideways, it forms multiple layers at the same time. So you could have a fossil up here that's actually deposited older than the one deposited down here. This geologic column does not exist. You have limestone, limestone, limestone. How do you know they're at different ages? How do they tell the age? How do you tell the difference between 100 million year old Jurassic limestone and 600 million year old Cambrian limestone? By the index fossils. That's how they do it. They date this one. Oh, look, you ask them. By radiometric dating, Kent. Ask an atheist, how old is this layer? They'll say, well, what fossils does it have in it? Red wall limestone, oh, let's see. Mauve limestone, wow. Temple Butte formation. How do you know one's older if they're depositing sideways? Grand Canyon, uh, let's see, uh, they tell, tell the age of the fossils, by the, the age of the layers, by the index fossils. They find trilobites and say, well, if you find a trilobite, it must be 500 million years old. Oh, yeah. What about the human shoe print where the guy had stepped on a trilobite? Are you serious, Kent? That, that, that does not look like a shoe print. That is not a shoe print. Come on. This is ridiculous. What a ridiculous example. What do you even say to this? It's in the book, The Evolution. Now they changed it to Evolution Handbook. There's that great big fat book. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, we got it here. Okay. I think we sell it in our bookstore. I asked an atheist one time, how could you get a human, obviously a human shoe print, on top of a trilobite? He said, well, maybe aliens visited the planet 500 million years ago. This happened. Oh. You know, they find some really big trilobites. Oh. And the trilobite has the most complicated eye ever. Each trilobite eye has hundreds and hundreds of lenses. That's the eye of a trilobite. Yeah, was the guy walking at the bottom of the ocean floor? Why would the first creature to evolve six, five or six hundred million years ago have the most complex eye already? Tril trilobite fossils make good index fossils, this textbook says. If a trilobite's found in a rock layer, the rock layer probably formed 500 to 600 million years ago. There's hundreds of different kinds of trilobites. Different kinds of trilobites? The deep sea isopod found in coastal waters of Florida, Mount Blanco Museum, which is closed now. Somebody needs to go out to Texas and reopen Joe Taylor's museum. Throw a Molotov cocktail through the window and open it by force. An isopod is not a trilobite. Go buy it off him, or off whoever is, who owns it now. It's closed down. Fabulous creation museum in Mount Blanco Creation Museum. Joe just died, what, about a month ago, okay? Up in Alaska, a friend of mine was up there. He worked up there drilling for oil. He said, Brother Hovind, we pull these things out of the water all the time. Baltic isopods. They plug the screens in the water lines of the conical oil water treatment plant in Kaparuk River, Alaska. Anyway, gastrolytes still alive in the South Pacific. There are no index fossils, guys. Nothing. Oh. No, watch my video number four, Lies in the Textbooks. They say, oh, the coelacanth is index fossil for 325 million year old. Really? They're still swimming around in the Indian Ocean. Not the same species as coelacanth. Couldn't that be um, found in any layer then? Still swimming around. Lakes in the third world. Coelacanth fossils. 360 million years old. Wow. Uh, no, they're still alive, guys. Sorry. A fish caught in time. Yes. This lady wrote the book and said, it's our own great uncle, 40 million times removed. <laughs> Certain kinds of stupidity, stupidity aren't fixable, I don't think, okay? Coelacanth. Look at that. Bony fin fish slowly changed into cows. Ah, yep. Ah. Beware. Don't be spoiled by that dumb philosophy. Let's see. Let's go to slide. We'll one more thing here and we'll quit. Seven, four. It is baloney to teach the kids the layers are different ages. All over the world, petrified trees are found standing up, connecting all those layers. How long does a dead tree stand around in your neighborhood? 
it's not in every layer. They're not going through all the different layers. What, two or three years? Not millions. Petrified trees in the standing position are found all over the world. Yellowstone has one with a fence around it. Is that supposed to be going through different layers? It's above ground. Because people kept breaking pieces off to take home for souvenirs. Standing petrified trees. They're everywhere. How, it only takes one to prove the point. But there are thousands of them petrified standing up. Up in central Alabama, just north of us here, they have a coal mine. You find all called Don, McDon Don McDonald. I don't know if that's still his number. Don McDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I hoping. Or not. I'll check it out and see. Okay. Or Samford Herndon, Herndon, he works there in this coal mine. Herndon, Herndon, Hoven, Hoven. Said, brother, we find petrified trees standing up all the time. Did you guys see the one in our science center we got? Bill, my friend who lives up there, there's a piece of petrified tree with the bark still on it. He said it fell out of the ceiling of a coal mine while they're digging up there. He said the whole tree is in there. A little hard to get out. That thing's heavy too, isn't it? That little piece of log this big around and probably this long got to weigh what? 75 pounds? Yeah. Petrified trees standing up, running through all the layers. Running through different coal seams, not different geological layers. Well, now hold it. You evolutionists want us to believe the coal layers are different ages. The Blue Creek formation of coal, according to them, there was a forest that got packed down. None of those, if those are supposed to represent petrified trees, none of those are running through more than one coal seam. And it's turned to coal. Then millions of years later, a bunch of dirt got on top of it, and then a whole new tree, a whole new forest had to grow on top of that to make the Mary Lee formation. Well, guys, if you take sample A, B, C of all the trees that are found petrified standing up, it's obvious to anybody with one eyeball and half a brain cell that the Mary Lee and the Blue Creek had to form at the same time because you got petrified trees going through both of them. None of those are going through both of them. Am I missing something here? I don't see any of these that are running through both of them. 27 layers in Specimen Ridge, Wyoming. Layers of forests, not just layers, Kent. These are forests that were alive and then died and then got compressed and had another forest on grow on top of it. And this happened 27 times. Broken off roots. The tree was jerked out, re redeposited in a flood. No, it wasn't. So the roots are broken off. Yeah. 30 foot petrified tree. Kettle. You're just going to ignore the fact that there are 27 forests on top of each other? Coal mine in Cookville, Tennessee. The top and the bottom are in different coal seams. This is the same tree. Two seams of coal. Guys, think about it now. Why are coal seams nearly always found on layers of clay or rock? Why is it that they're the trees are the only fossils that go through these different coal seams. Why isn't it any, why isn't it anything else like an animal fossil? But it's something that fossilizes that can be stuck in the ground and stay upright for a really long time. I wonder why that's the only fossil that, that you can give an example like this. Wouldn't, shouldn't there be tons of fossils of fossilized animals going through different coal seams? But no, it's only it's only the trees. That's pretty poor soil to have a forest growing on it. Wait a minute. Petrified tree? Joggins, Nova Scotia. Guy wrote to me and said, brother, we got hundreds of them up here. Oh. All these straight pet petrified trees running straight up through all the layers. They're all up and down the beach. Not all the layers. Joggins, Nova Scotia. Ian Juby has done great research on that. Ianjuby.org. Check his website out. Ian Juby is an idiot. The petrified trees standing up, running oh. through all the layers. It's just, I think it's, it's borderlines on criminal to teach the kids the geologic column. It doesn't exist. Takes one to know one. And it's crazy. These two crazy guys that need whacked, they're, too, they're dead now, but and they know better now. Dick up their corpses and whack the corpses. Charles Lyle, there is no geologic column. You lied to everybody. You dig up his corpse and shit on it. Two lawyers. Some of you are trained at that and really good at it, okay? Oh, wow. This was in our museum. I think it's still in Florida. Petrified tree or wood running through 12 layers of slate. Wow. Oh. I guess I don't understand how they can live with themselves and teach that crazy geologic column. It does. I don't know how you can live with yourself and be friends with Chris Jones. 
Okay, we have a super chat from AntiChristian736 for $10. It says, my name is Kent, and I am smarter than all scientists because I got a fake diploma. Hovind does not exist, guys. Sorry. Doesn't exist. Let's see. Uh, part four, whack an atheist. Right here. Alt-DV. Alt-DV. Got to leave. Push on me. Let me go back to closing here. 24. Oh. It's been a busy day. I gave three tours today, okay? Oh, the Bible warned us there would be scoffers in the last days. Oh, tinfoil Dan, tinfoil hat Dan. Hey, shout out Simon Dan. The scoffers are going to say all things continue as they were. They're willingly ignorant of how. Yes, Ian Juby once claimed dinosaurs dropped eggs while running away from the flood. That's why they laid them in a certain pattern. <laughs> I remember that. How God made the heavens, and it's heavens plural. There are three heavens in the Bible. First oh. heaven where the birds fly. We call that the atmosphere. Hovered heaven. Second heaven where the stars are. We call that outer space. Where the stars are. Why does he say it like that? Where the stars are. Third heaven where God lives. Oh. I'm going there one day. Okay. I'm going to hell. Hell Hovind. And the world was overflowed with water. The scoff. Ian Juby dresses as an overweight Indiana Jones. <laughs> because you're ignorant of also the judgment of God. See, they're ignorant of the creation, the flood, and the coming judgment of God. The judgment of coming. And tinfoil hat, Dan, you're willingly ignorant of all three. God is going to judge our coming. I'll debate you any time, son, any time, okay? Whoa. I suggest you pick on softer targets like the flat earthers because you're wrong about evolution. I'll debate you and any hundred evolutionists any day of the week. Call Standing for Truth, schedule a debate. Does Kent know that uh, Jack Nicholson was the bad guy in A Few Good Men? I don't think he does. There's a war going on, soldier. I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. If you're not going to shoot, at least carry bullets. Pay for the bullets or take care of the wounded. Do something to get in, in this war. But these guys... What does that mean? Guys that teach this... They talk about the Cenozoic and Jurassic and... Tra and none of that exists. It's all baloney. All of that is really good evidence for the flood. It doesn't exist, but it's good evidence for the flood. That makes sense. Think you're going to feel real stupid judgment day when God shows you the video and said, why did you teach this crazy geologic column? Here's what happened. Oh, oh, thanks, God. And you might be ruining somebody's faith. I'd, I'd hate to do that. How can you ruin somebody's faith? If you believe something on faith, that means you believe it with no evidence. So how can you ruin someone's faith? This is what I don't understand. And before God. Okay, that's enough for tonight. Okay, that's the end of the stream. So thank you to the people who sent super chats or we had somebody sign up for my Patreon and somebody join the channel memberships. Thank you to all the people who did that. And thank you to the people who watched my last stream um, about Daniel Dennett. Got some really good comment section for that video. So go check out the comments if you haven't. Um, yeah, just uh, thank you to everybody hanging out in the live chat. I, excuse me, Hoven. I think we have about 100 live viewers. So thanks for hanging out with me. Leave a comment letting me know what you thought of the video if you're watching the replay and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We want to reach 8,000 subscribers soon. We're creeping up on it, so I would really like to do that soon. <laughs> so subscribe to the channel and share the videos. Uh, share, share the streams with somebody. Share it with a friend. Share it with an enemy. You know, just share. send it to your crush. Send it to your ex-wife. Send your ex-wife the link. Just tell her to watch it or bribe someone to watch it. Say, I'll give you $5 if you watch this Atheist Junior stream. And if they, won't, if they don't do it for $5, give them $10. Um, okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's debate with Kent Hovind versus Grayson tonight on SFT. So that should be a really good debate. If you don't want to watch that uh, on that channel... I'm going to be doing a, a review of that debate with Grayson. I, I think, hopefully, I'm going to have Grayson come on. I've asked him to come on. I think he will. So, yeah, check out that video, and I'll just see you guys in the next one.